What's up guys and welcome to another video of LC Power Sports today. We got the old Honda Rancher 420 with 2019 out. And we're gonna be installing a high lifter snorkel kit, high lifter cells. So I got everything laid out inside the box. The one thing on this, they don't send this, but they recommend getting it. Get you some good brand dielectric grease. A two and three eighths hole saw to drill your hole through your plastic for the snorkel. Some all purpose pipe cement. And then some black silicone. I got different kinds. You can get what kind you want, but that's what kind I chose from doing this stuff in the past. So it comes with everything you need to snorkel it. So we're going to get started on this thing. So um, it's gonna, probably going to be a long little video, but just stay tuned. And I'll sh take you through each step. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to take the seat off. We're going to pop these plastics off. They pretty much just are pop riveted in there. You just kind of pull on them and they'll come off. It's on each side and they say to take this plastic off over. And it pops off as well. So we'll take that off real quick. It does have two push rivets right here up beside the gas tank. You can take them off or you don't have to. They're connected to the side plastics and all this stuff. It just pops off with those kind of little clips and you just pull them straight out. So we'll go ahead and take this off. So the next step you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna pop your air, lock, air box lid off. It's pretty simple. You just pop those port tab, tabs off, pull it up and pull it right off. Next thing they got us doing is taking the factory air duct out, which is this white plastic piece that goes into your air box. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I'll probably post a picture with arrows pointing on what you need to take off to get this out. And I'll tell you after I get it out what we need to do to get this off. All right guys, so it has this little clip that goes around these wires right here. You'll just want to pop that off. And it's also got a plastic rivet. You'll just pop that out and you'll unscrew the fastener that holds it into the air box and you just pull that out. That's pretty much how you get it out. You gotta, you gotta kind of pry up on this, twist it back and forth until you can get it out. It's kind of hard, but if you work at it for a minute, you'll get it out. So it said next to take off your air filter. I went ahead and did that because we're going to be changing ours out because it was due to change it. So I didn't took it out, but that's all you need to do on this step. All right, so on this next step, basically what they're wanting you to do in the next few steps is take this air box out. So the steps you're going to do to do this, you'll unscrew the clamp that holds on the air intake that goes to the engine. Next, you can see we're going to take this hose off. You'll just pinch those two together. It'll pull right off. And then we'll disconnect the uh, AFM, pull it out, and then we'll come over here. It's got two tabs on each side. You'll pop those out, and the air box will just slide right out. You have to just kind of maneuver it out. We'll get it out and move on to the next steps. Okay guys, so when you get your air box out, you're gonna wanna get your black silicone. You're gonna wanna go around all the places where water could go in. I actually forgot that little spot. That's a plastic, I mean little rubber grommet thing that slips through the air box. So I have to go back and get that real quick. But you just put it all around it. I'm gonna do like two coats after this one dries just to be safe 
But you want to let this dry for a few hours in the sun to let it sell off real good so you don't have any problems on down the road. So we pop the air box back in here. And on your air sensor, a little rubber piece that pops out. Before you stick that back in, put a bead of silicone around it and put it in there. And we'll let it all sit for a while and dry. Okay guys, so there's two 90s that come in this kit. And the first one is going to go in your bottom air duct hole. And you're going to put another 90. Now don't glue none of this yet. All we're doing is hooking all this stuff up to test fit it. We'll go all the way up to the front and drill our hole and make sure everything looks right before we go to gluing anything. So we'll have perfect fitment. And after you get that on there, this little, it's about 30 inches probably. It's a pipe. It's a hose pipe. And it's got two gray fittings on each end. You have to put them in there. And if you can't get them in there good, and just add a little bit of water and slip it right on there but yeah we're gonna go ahead and put this in there and we'll run this up and we'll go on to the next steps so once you put that in there it ain't got to be all the way in there just set it in there and kind of push your hose up under here under the front fender and it should be sticking out right there the next I'm going to work on putting the high lifter plate on where your snorkel will come up through. So on your front plate, it's going to sit about right there. In my hand are some U-bolts with nuts and washers. It will go on here, so we'll just kind of barely put it on there. Don't tighten it down, just snug it up so you can still move it around. Then we'll get ready to make our mark for where we want to cut the hole. Just slide it to wherever you want it to be. Then you'll mark your hole. I kind of just put the uh, hole saw on there and scuffed it up some so I'll know where to cut at. And I'll do that again just to show y'all what I mean. I went ahead and just started the hole for the drill again. This is two and three eighths. So you'll just move your bracket little thing out the way. You'll start back in that hole and go ahead and drill your hole. All right, so we got the hole cut. So we'll just blow that off and we'll move on to the next step. I'll uh, clean that up just a little bit. It's pretty clean cut, but there are still little bitty plastic pieces all around it. We'll clean that up and get to moving on. Uh, so your kit will come with a female end, a male end, and this little spacer. You're going to put the spacer on top of the male end, slide it up under here. And then screw the female end on top. So we'll do that real quick. So what this is going to do is pretty much hold your snorkel riser up here. And once you tighten your bolts down, it'll keep it from shaking or moving like some snorkel kits do. But you won't get this with a high lifter kit. It's good quality stuff. So we're going to keep on moving. We'll get on to the next steps. In your kit, it's going to come with this piece. It's a 45. It's got one for the Honda Foreman and then one for the Rancher. So you'll just use the one that they say is for the Rancher. It'll go right up through where you cut your hole. It'll come through and go down there. I went ahead and put the riser on it to see what it's all going to look like. So now that I've got everything the way I want it, we're going to disassemble it, glue it, stick it back together. And then we'll start running all our vent lines and all that stuff and putting everything back together. But first, uh, just a tip. When you take apart, like if you get everything like you want it, take you a marker 
mark each side so when you take it apart and you put it back together you can just stick it back in and line them up and it makes it a lot easier so you don't put it back together and then something ain't right and you done got it glued and you can't get it apart so just a little helpful tip but we will get started doing all that and then i'll get back with y'all after we got it all back apart and put back together and then we'll start going over all the vent lines and i'll show you some extra things that i'm gonna do to prevent it from when we get in water in case they get too deep and prevent it from uh, dying or anything like that so when you take the hose back off they give you some heat tape what you'll do is just wrap it around as much as you can go on this hose so when it sits by the motor it won't get too hot or melted or anything so just wrap it up the best you can with the stuff applied uh, you can go extra if you want to and go buy more which i didn't do that because i gave a pretty good bit so i'll get this wrapped up real quick all right so on the vent lines the first one they want you to mess with is the fan vent line so what i've done is i've already traced it down and here's where the fan vent line comes out it's right here it's kind of pinkish looking so it's kind of easy to tell uh, it's right up under the gas tank on the right side where your throttle is you look straight down and it's right there so we'll start off with that one all right so once you find that and you get that you'll put this straight connector on you'll run this hose over to here then you'll get a straight connector with a with the piece coming out straight like that and you hook one side to your bellow and we'll go around here to the front and your front diff vent line is going to come up right here and it's going to go up you'll just take the end of it and put a straight connection in it Then you'll just come up by the gas tank with the line that they gave you. It's maybe a foot long, but it'll just connect to the front differential. And you'll just come up here and lay it on top of your gas tank. And once you've ran that line from the front differential up, you're going to want to cut off two three inch pieces off of that line to keep. And you're going to use these in a little bit. Now you're going to want to locate your uh, rear brake line vent, which will be right here, and it'll be shoved into this little hole. And then on the right to the other side will be your rear diff vent line, and it's the same way, just like on the other side, just on this side. So you'll want to just locate those. You know, come over here to where you cut. After you cut your two three inch parts off of this line that goes to the front diff, you'll put in this Y connector. And then we'll go from there. So you located your rear differential line. You're gonna run that one right here to the front differential line. And you'll leave this part pointing up. Then you'll take one of your three inch cut pieces off. I'm going to put the camera down, but you'll put it on that. Alright, so once you connect your three inch onto this one, you're going to want to put another connector up here at the top of it. So, once you put that bar or the connector into the end of that three inch line, You'll run your brake line vent over here and connect it to that also. Alright guys, so you'll have that one extra piece to connect something to. So you'll put your other 3 inch line on it and you'll connect it to your fan, which is the first one you ran to your bellow. And you'll do it that way. I know this seems really confusing. 
but High Lifter explains it very well in their directions. So if you're doing that kit, follow the directions and you can also watch this video to help you out some too if you need to see it in person. Alright guys, so on this, you're going to pull this vent line off of there. And you replace it with the vent line they give you. It's about four or three foot long probably. But you'll just run it up and you'll wrap it up in a circle and zip tie it somewhere up in here to hide up under the plastics. Alright, so on the top of your radiator overflow vent line, you'll have a black hose. What you'll do is kind of the same thing that you just did on the other thing. Is run it up, circle it around a few times. And what I did, I ran it up and zip tied it around the steering stem. There's a wire that comes off of it and I just uh, wrapped the zip tie around it. And we'll move on to almost the last step. Alright, so next on the list, there will be a vent line coming out your gas tank, and it comes and turns and goes down, goes up under in there, and connects to the frame. Pretty much all you'll do is just pull it out, you coil it up, and we'll zip tie it up under here to our steering stem to get it up and out of the way. Alright guys, so we got that part done. On all the ones that you call up, make sure they're pointing down about 4 inches. Just so if water hits them, it won't go up through them. That's the reason why they coil them up, so the water won't get in everything. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to run some silicone around our air box, and we're going to put the lid on. But first we're going to put our new filter in real quick. Alright, so what you're going to do... You're going to take that black RTV silicone and you'll run it in the ridge all the way around and you'll put it on your airbox, snap it down, let everything dry overnight and by the morning time, check over everything, make sure everything looks good and then I'd say go full sin, go test that thing out in some water. So we're going to do that real quick and we'll get the plastics all back together and we'll check out how it looks. Alright guys, so we finally got it on, all put back together, everything tightened down, and I got to say, I like it. It looks way better than doing it homemade. It's well worth paying the extra few bucks for it. Everything fits together really nice. Instructions are great. But yeah guys, we'll be testing it out tomorrow. We're going to go ride the river. And we will let y'all know how that works out. But overall, I'm highly satisfied with the high lifter kit. I definitely want to go add some more high lifter accessories to this thing. But anyways, guys, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Comment if this helped y'all out any. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. We'll see y'all later.